Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons, and this is another video in the set of videos that I'm doing that shows you how to manage land development projects and specifically do that using the, this uh, tool called Airtable. It's an online database tool. That's pretty handy, so I use it as kind of a drop in replacement for Microsoft Access or SQL Lite. Um, so what I want to do in this video is show you how um, to use the page designer. So we're going to, we're going to edit the page designer here to, to tweak this report that I've got for uh, the land development projects. And then uh, we're going to refactor our, our tables a little bit. We're going to tweak that design and, and uh, then adjust our, our report template and page designer to take advantage of that new design. So. This is the the, uh, the main table in my base here, land development projects, and uh, it, it's got a list of our land development projects here. And uh, what I want to do, I've already got a template set up in Page Designer, but I want to change that a little bit to make some more room. Um, and I didn't get to, a chance to show that to you guys in the other video. So <clears throat> once you have the Page Designer app added here, you can go in and, and hit this little pencil right here to edit the layout. And uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to uh, make this a, a, a larger page size and then um, move some things around here. So let's see if we can do that. You can't actually change the page page size in here. So what you want to do is you go in here to your settings. And then in here, we can change our page size. And I want, it's going to give me pixels, which is kind of funny. That is not what I want. But let's try this. I want it 11 by 17, so let's just do, and I don't really care as long as the dimensions are right. So let's do 11,000 by 17,000. Let's see what that does for us. Whoa. All right. I'm just trying to see how huge that made it. That made it way too huge. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we gotta put in a feature request to see if we can get these guys to add some more page sizes here. Um, but let's go in and uh, let's try this again. So I'm gonna go half of this. So I'm gonna go 5,500 and 8,500, and uh, that. That looks a little bit closer to what I want. So let's see how that looks in here. Yeah, it might still be too big. Oh, so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna half that again. So I'll make this 2250, and I'm gonna make this 4250. And as long as I keep those dimensions at the same ratio, we should be okay. All right, uh, this looks a little more manageable. This looks, a, this looks a little closer to the sheet size I wanted. Let's just, uh, oh, you can see I got those dimensions backwards, so let's go in and fix that. So we want the width to be 4250 and the height to be 2250. All right, that looks a little better. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm gonna I just change this layout a little bit. So I'm gonna just grab this field here, and uh, I'm gonna get rid of the. the uh, second, I don't need this name field. I just need the comments. Uh, it's possible I just need the comments. I don't need it. I don't know if it's worth having the date on there or not. Anyways, we're gonna resize this. Make this a little bigger. And then let's try and add the let's add the name back in. And then right here we can drag it up so it appears first. Uh, so that that looks all right. I think I'm okay with that. <coughs> okay, now there's a couple other uh, there's a couple other uh, uh, things items of information that I don't have in here that I need to add. So I'm going to select these fields. It won't let me multiple. It won't let me multiple select. So I'm going to just slide this down. Because we want to add a couple 
things here. And I just try and keep these lined up. So, you know, this isn't the world's most advanced layout tool, which is okay. Uh, it gets the job job done. I hope they add some more. Hope they add some more features to it though. So I'm just trying to keep these space consistently here. Okay, so I want to add, a, uh, there's a couple things that I would like to add. Um, I'm going to just shorten these up a little bit so they don't overlap, these uh, labels. So I've got a, a, a field or a column in my table now called um, I've got a couple I want to add. So I want to add one for um, I'm going to call this master project and we're going to just make that bold so I come down here to weight and make it 800 and then I'm going to add another label here Some of these uh, land development projects have villages, so I'm just going to put village in here, and again we'll make that 800. Okay, and then to add the fields, we can come down here and we just drag the phase over, or drag the field over. Sorry. So here's my village. So I'm going to put that in here. Okay, and then master project name, I'm going to put that in right here. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to probably just move phase up. And uh, I might leave a little white space here. I think I'm okay with that for now. Um, in fact, what I might do is just group these things together a little bit. Uh, there isn't a way that I've found to add horizontal lines, which is a bummer. So I'm just going to use some white space to keep this stuff kind of grouped together. Okay. Uh, so now you can see what this looks like. Got a little more room for my table there. And what I want to do now is uh, I'm going to refactor my table design a little bit. So I've got this next critical item um, here. And, and what I want to do is I want to refactor my design. Uh, to allow for uh, multiple critical items. So we might have some maps that, some projects that have more than one critical item. And so to do that, we're gonna take that critical item field and uh, we're gonna turn it into its own table and then we're gonna link it. Okay, which is kind of what we did with the surveyor notes before. So I don't know if there's a way to do it, do it here. Yeah, I don't see a way to do that here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and make a new table. And we're going to call it critical items. Okay. And I don't, uh, I'm going to think I'm going to leave all this for now. I think I'm okay with all this. So this name, this name field is really supposed to be a primary ID. So what, I, what I'm probably going to, uh, what I'm probably going to do is uh, use some combination of date and initials there. And I think I'm going to change this. Um, that's fine. I'm going to leave notes in there, but I'm going to add a, I'm going to add a new field, single line text, and we're going to call it a description. And we'll drag that over here. Okay. So uh, here's an example. So I'm going to just do date and then surveyor initials and then just an ID number. Um, and so this is, uh, we need a signed geotechnical report. Okay. And the status on this one is work in progress. Okay. I'm not going to have, uh, I'm going to have a note actually. So I'm going to say, 
to obtain four file maps in the middle. Okay. And then, uh, so here we're going to add a we're going to add a lookup field so we can link this to our uh, to our main table here. So we're going to link to land development projects. And then what we can do here is now we can associate that with a project so that critical item is for Sage Creek or said. Okay. And let's do uh, let's do a couple more just so we can see how this works in Page Designer. Um, so here's another critical item for the same project. So we'll call this one 02 since it's the same date and we need updated land title report. And in the notes we're gonna say need an updated land tile report once client assumes ownership of the subject parcel. Okay, and this is again, it's going to be a work in progress. And actually that's going to be a to-do. Okay, and it's the same project, so it's my Sage Creek project. So the the uh, client doesn't own the property yet, but they will soon when they when they get it. We need an updated title report. Um, let's see. Uh, so I'll do one more for this map. And I noticed I messed this date up, so let's fix that. It's not 2014; it's 2021. Okay, so we need to add eight foot. PUE abandonment to the final map. Okay, and uh, just make a little note here. Check with city surveyor on abandonment language. We want to make sure we get the right language on the map. This is a to do. And uh, that's for Sage Creek. Okay. And uh, you know, while I'm thinking about it, let's add a field here. And uh, we're going to do a single select, and we're going to call this assign to. Okay, and I'm going to put Rick in here, put Dane in here, I'm going to put Elaine in here, put Elaine in here, and we'll put myself in here. Okay. So now we can assign these tasks. So this is uh, Rick's working on that, and these two are going to be me. Okay. So now, <clears throat> we come back in here, you'll see into our main uh, table. You can see we've got a new, new field here for critical items that links to all those records in that critical items table. Okay. And then uh, what we want to do is we want to move these over. We're going to get rid of this column, and uh, we're going to move those items over here. Um, okay, so I'm not going to do that right now. I don't want you guys to, to watch me do that, but we'll do that. And then uh, we'll go back in. I'll, I'll pause the video, get that done, and then we'll go back in and, and we'll take a look at um, how to add that other um, set of notes on the critical items to our page design. All right, guys, I forgot I wanted to show you something here. I did want to show you guys how the form view works in Airtable. So uh, I'm on my critical items here. I'm going to add those items so I can get rid of that column in my, my table now that we've got it linked to an external table. So you can create a, a form view just down here and just add the form. And then uh, right here you can just open the form. And uh, that gives you a pretty slick little, uh, little data, data entry form that you can use. Oh, it's a little easier than just typing in the table. So I'm going to just go ahead and show you guys how that works here. Um, so I'm going to put in my name of my critical item here. Description is going to be need completed land development. Actually, I'm just going to say completed land development application notes. Say start with application previous uh, large wall final map for this project. Okay, and this is going to be a to do, and I'm going to assign it to myself, and we're going to associate it with this South Point West project. Now, when I hit submit there, it's going to say, Hey, thanks for submitting the form. 
and you come back in here to your grid view, uh, you'll see I have that new record here. It, uh, it automatically got added. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then uh, to reload the form, you just refresh the page, and you can put in your uh, put in your next entry. So that's how the form view works, and you can share those forms too uh, via a uh, hyperlink. Okay, guys. So I used that form view, and I I added some more critical items here, which you can see in my table. Okay, I also added a pending status, a pending option to the status field, and so now I want to go in and show you guys how how do we add those uh, critical items to our uh, to our page design. So let's go ahead and edit the page design, and then uh, I want to go ahead and put in another text label here. that up. I want it to be at the bottom of this table. Oop, that's not what I wanted, is it? Okay, and we're going to call this critical items. And we'll make it uh, bold. Okay, so there's our label, just like this label up here. And now we're going to drag that table in, so you can see that new the new column is here. This is the the column or the field that links to that external table now. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that over here, and we're going to just get it where we want it here, and we're going to make it the same width as that table up top. And then we'll, we'll come over and figure out what how we want to configure this table. So um, what you do, let's see, click on this, pull up the properties. And what I want to do is I want to add, um, so right now the only column I've got shown is the name column. So I want to add, I'm going to add the assign to, I'm going to add the description, and I'm going to add the uh, notes. And then uh, we'll add the status. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and sort. I saw a place to do that. We're going to add a sort by status. Okay. So you can see this project only has one. Uh, it only has one critical item here, right? But you'll notice um, if we toggle up. So this project has multiple critical items, right? So that's why I went ahead and put that table, uh, put that, turn that column into an external table. I just noticed here I don't like the way, uh, I, I don't need all those borders. And there's a way to fix that in here. Let's see if I can remember. So table borders, I just want horizontal, I believe. Yeah, that's what I want, okay. And so just to give you an idea of what this looks like, we can print this now. Yeah, let's see, let's cancel, let's go to the landscape. And let's see, I can't remember if I'm printing all the records. Print, I wanna do all the records in the main view. All right, I'm gonna do one per page. Let's try that. Okay, so we're going to save as a PDF. So it looks like it's it's adding two records if they'll fit, and I think I'm okay with that. I thought we told it not to do that though. Let's see if there's a way to, to fix that. So record layout, see I have one per page. Eh, I'm just not sure, oh, paper size, there you go, custom. Oh man, now I gotta remember this, what was our width? Um, our width was uh, 4250 and our height was 2250. All right, now I bet it'll have one per page. Yeah, now it's got one per page. Cool, so that's what I want, so we're gonna say save 
and I'm gonna pick a better name here. All right, guys, so I got that printed to PDF. Let's go see what it looks like here. So here we go. This is the PDF that we made. 